Hey folks, my name's Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery. Today we have got an unboxing that I am very excited about. This is a knife I've been hunting for for a while, a Herman Vespertilio. And they're pretty hard to come by, but a friend of mine in the community named Noah, um, EDC lawyer on Instagram, he connected me with a guy that he heard was going to be selling one of these. So he made this possible and it all worked out. I'm very, very excited to get this open. Uh, yeah, let's get this going. There is so much tape. This is like six layers of tape. It's literally difficult to cut through. Ho 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 ho. Yeah, okay. What all is in here? A Velcro patch from Polish Custom Knives. The, um, I think they're the only retailer of Herman Knives these days. Um, the proprietary tool for opening the pivot. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, okay. This is pretty cool. This is a certificate of authenticity. And what makes it cool is that if you shine a black light on this, this has um, specific threads that glow different ways. And that's like a, you know, a proof that this is the appropriate one. This is like the real and authentic one. And ooh, also just look at that. That is so freaking cool. Polish Custom Knives, you are doing a fantastic job with your overall branding and paraphernalia. Um, the last thing that came in this is these little tiny balls, and we will get to that in a second too. Okay, I cannot wait to get this open. Like I said, I've been hunting one of these for a really long time, and not only did I manage to find one period, but I managed to find one that I really, really like because every single one is different, and this build is one that's right up my alley. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so this is a Vespertilio. And Vespertilio is a name that is related to bats. And we'll look at that. We'll talk about that in just a second when I open this up because it'll become more obvious. Um, but this particular one has a stone wash finish that gives it this kind of almost charcoal gray, but in some lights bluish quality. And then this inlay here is um, red fat carbon. Oof. I love that. Okay, I cannot wait to open this up. <laughs> okay, uh, the noise that makes is insane. Let's try that again. <laughs> what? Excuse me? How does it make that particular noise? Ooh, you can hear this is dry. Yeah, this definitely wants some lube, but holy crap, what the heck is that noise? Oh, that's fun. Why does it do that noise? This is the pivot. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. Not the pivot. This is the detent ball. I can't see from where I am. Is that a regular detent ball? I'm going to have to take a closer look because I can't look at this up close and have it on our camera at the same time. But it sounds... I'm going to tell you, this sounds similar. Oh, I hate this squeaking. This really wants um, some lube. This sounds similar to my whole haptic. There is a click and a clunk. Yeah, wow, those are weirdly similar. Um, I can tell you right now one of the reasons. Part of what that noise is in this haptic is the way that this titanium handle and then the titanium liner acts as kind of like a, an, uh, almost like a bell. 
Like this echoes in this in a particular way. And so when it clunks open, there's a reverberation that gives it a particular quality. And then the fact that this is such a thin blade means that it has like this hollow grind is so, so thin at the end that it has that kind of tuning fork quality to it. And then the other part that makes this so specific is the detent ball. Um, the way that it's not a detent ball, that it's a detent ramp, means that there's a very clean break that gives it a very crisp clunk noise. And this is doing something very, very similar in in um, <laughs> um, in both the reverberation quality, like this handle and this very thin and relatively light pressure uh lock bar is is echoing in that way and then this very thin blade because this gets super freaking thin oh can i get it to focus on that i'm probably not gonna be able to get it to focus on that oof okay now that we have this open oh man is that beautiful so this this, the moment I saw it, and the moment I've shown this to anyone, immediately says, that looks like a Batarang. And of course it does. And, you know, I'm not full-on Nick Shabazz level of into Batman, but I am a comic book nerd. I grew up going to comic book conventions. And so the fact that this looks like a Batarang immediately appealed to me. And that's also where this name comes from. So Vespertilio is a genus of bats. And so, I mean, if it's been a long time since I've taken any kind of biology class. So if you're not familiar, it goes kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, oh, family, genus, species. And like that's how you get more and more specific as you go. But what's fun is that, so this is a family, sorry, this is a genus of bats. So there's a couple of species within Vespertilio. But what's fun about this, the word Vespertilio is actually the oldest accepted genus name for any bats. Like back in the 1750s is when they were first classifying uh, the species of bats. And so originally it was the only genus and every single species of bat all lived under Vespertilio. And so it's kind of like the OG bat name. God, this is freaking light. This is so light. There is a uh, very heavy internal skeletonization here. Let's see if I can use this as a backdrop. How do I need to position this for my light? Is it going to work? I don't know. Can you see? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe if I hold it this way. Can you see in there? No, probably not. Anyway, this is very heavily skeletonized. And this, oh, look at this pivot. This is so cool. This is the the coolest way to do a captive pivot. Um, there's a variety of ways that you can do a, a non-free spinning pivot. And the majority of the people that do it have a, a D-shaped pivot itself, like the barrel of the pivot itself is D-shaped. And I've never liked that because it means that there's a gap between the circle that is in drilled into the blade tang and the pivot. There's a gap where gunk can fill up. Um, but then one of the, you know, the next way would be like have like a, just the D shape on one end and only goes into one liner. Um, but my favorite ones are where the, there's something about the, uh, pivot, the show side or the pivot, or I guess in this particular instance, because of the way he made this fancy and proprietary, it's the clip side, but the, there's something about the shape of it that makes it won't go. And if you look on like a, oh, I don't know. Like a Civivi knife, there's a little ridge right here on the inside underneath this C. There's a little ridge that lines in with a ridge on the backspacer, on the backspacer, sorry, the uh, show side scale. And that prevents it from uh, spinning and you can't see it. So this is actually one of my favorite implementations. But what's even cooler is when it, there's something about the shape of it that prevents it from spinning. Because that makes it just look even neater. And you'll see over here on uh, the the brown cortex that this is ovular. Is that a word? Ovular? No, that sounds, I don't know. Oval shaped. Let's go with that. And as a result, this won't spin. And I love that, 
But check out how cool this is, because it's like domed in this beautiful flower shape. And I will say he has even cooler versions because he has versions of this type of pivot that have super fancy micro milling there. But I, I am just stoked to see that the pivot itself and the scale have been milled to have this same unique pattern. So it fits in and only one, you know, only one place and won't, won't turn. Like that's such a good, creative and clever and beautiful way of handling this. Okay. Now let's get to this. Ooh. Okay. I am not as opposed to proprietary pivots as some folks out there, especially, you know, Mr. Shabazz. Because the reality, well, okay, I'm not opposed to them on super high-end knives. This is a very, <laughs> this is a very high-end knife. And the the reality is, is this kind of knife, I, the, I'm never going to disassemble this in the field. And so I don't need this to have a standard T8 bit or something like that, that I could have on me in some kind of Leatherman or whatever multi-tool I would have, or, you know, Vero micro thing or something like that. Because I'm only ever going to disassemble this in a space where I am in a, a, you know, a safe place. However, I will say it is kind of annoying that I have to keep a separate tool and that I have to, um, get it out and use it. And you'll also see that the shape of it means that the way that you disassemble this is by placing this right here into that and spinning it kind of like around it. And that's just nowhere near as convenient. You get a lot of leverage, but that's nowhere near as convenient as just like a, you know, a regular bit driver. But at the same time, it looks so cool that I am perfectly happy to accept this. Like this is a trade-off I am willing to make. Um, the, the next thing I was going to talk about is where these balls come in. And part of the reason why I wouldn't disassemble this in the field, oh my God, is because this uses, um, custom made cage, uh, caged, technically caged, custom made ball bearing system. And he, I, I, there's a, oh, several makers out there that make their own bearings. This guy, Herman. Bartosh Herman specifically, he uh, he makes them out of carbon fiber, which I've never heard of anyone else doing. Absolutely wild. But just like Shirogorov knives, even though there is a cage that the balls sit in, they are free to fall out of that. And so you definitely wouldn't want to take this apart somewhere where those balls might go flying. But how cool is it that knowing that they include some additional balls just in case you do lose them. I will say though, look how freaking tiny these balls are. That is so much smaller than a standard ball bearing. Wow. Gosh, those are small. I honestly don't even know where you would find those. And these are uh, the black, what is that? Silicon nitride or something like that form of ceramic caged ball bearings. Oof. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I am doing way too much information about this in what is supposed to just be a simple unboxing, but my god, I'm excited for this. Look at how beautiful this carbon fiber backspacing is. The lines. And you can't really tell maybe in this video, but there are subtle, like, just kind of hues of red in there, which means I assume that this is carbon fiber like that. I could be wrong. This might just be regular carbon fiber. But there are right there, 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 there. Ah, maybe it's my eyes just playing tricks on me. Ooh, I noticed that the centering isn't quite on. I will have to tweak this. But I'm going to take this entire thing apart just to make it so that I can get rid of this. But yeah, do you hear that? This is what happens when I break the detent. freaking bonkers. And what's going on there? Yeah, okay. What's going on there is that the the way that the the lock bar right here is engaging 
with that. The ball is sitting pretty deep. It's not uh, sitting completely flush, but it's sitting deep enough that it's hitting a relatively up and down flat portion of this detent ball. And so there's a lot of resistance to move up over this hump. This really does look like something weird. I know, I know, I know I'm supposed to cut this shorter, but I have to take a look at this. What the heck is going on here? Sorry, this isn't gonna be very good for the video. You know what? So this is, this does seem to be a standard detent ball, I think. Except it's just placed up higher? It seems to be that it's placed just slightly further out than you normally would. They're normally submerged to the point where like, where's that spinny thing I have here? They're normally to the point where they're like not f fully halfway out. They're more like, um, maybe like that. And this one seems to be more like that. So it just sticks out slightly more uh, proud of the liner. And what that means is that the, the blade is able to come down to a further point down here, which gives it a very, very um, sharp, uh, steep slope to go up. But I'm, and I'm surprised it's able to have such a crisp break because that's such a, that's so specific and it rings this thin blade so much. Oh, I love that. I can't get over that freaking noise. You know, I made that same reaction when I made the, when I unboxed this one for the first time. And I'm still freaking blown away by that. Also, I mean, look at that. This just, oh, okay. And this, <laughs> this definitely does not fall shut. You can shake it shut. The fact that this centering is off means I'm, I'm not sure what's going on in terms of pivot tension, and everything like that. This does feel kind of tight. So I'm going to disassemble this knife and lube it up and see if I can get this centered. And I wonder if that's gonna make the action even more fall shutty. Cause this is definitely right now requiring some shakes, but man, that sounds dry. Oh, I am in love. Okay, this is way too long of a video for an unboxing, but I just so excited, you know? <laughs> Whew. Okay. Have a nice day and I'll catch you next time. Thanks. Okay, I wanted to film a quick follow-up because I disassembled, lubed, and tuned this. And first things first, my centering is back dead on, but also, oh, that noise. This indeed is way more fall shut. Like just very gentle shakes and this goes straight home. Yeah, and but then check out this. I paid more attention to what is making this noise and listen. That is so freaking cool. So what's happening here is this leaf spring is almost entirely what's contributing that noise because this is um, a little bit thinner than you might normally find, but it also attaches further back and it's sprung out the entire way. It's like sometimes they don't start bending out until about here. And as a result, there's a pocket of air that runs along the entire length of the liner that creates this echo chamber and allows it to reverberate. And then it produces this noise that's almost similar to like a kind of like a jaw harp. And so then next, this detent ball is a little bit um, larger than normal. And so there's a f uh, like a harder fall or, or a further fall from the top of that down. So the first noise you get is the fall off of the detent ball onto the leaf spring. And then the fall from the leaf, from the leaf spring itself, the lock bar, uh, just off onto the back of the blade tang. Oh, that's so freaking cool. And you put it together with that additional really um, specific noise and you get <laughs> Oh my god, that is just so freaking So freaking cool. Okay. Thanks for watching and uh, this is the actual end. Have a nice time and I'll see you next time